All right, so last day down the river. It's Thursday, the 8th. And uh, so we're gonna go over, two of us are gonna go over and finish laying brick this morning, me and another guy. Everybody else is gonna go out and give out water filters out in the villages. Um, tonight we'll dedicate the church, we'll have a church service, and then uh, we'll head back to my house. Uh, probably leave about maybe midnight or so, I don't know. Uh, get into my house in the morning, or no, actually I think we're leaving tomorrow morning back to my house because we're only five hours from from there originally we were supposed to be about 10 hours up river but the river's so low we couldn't get there in the boat so um, so we should get in about noon and we're gonna hang out and go to the zoo and go to the museum and tour the city um, and tomorrow night we have dinner about 6 30 and then our flight leaves about midnight Head back to the states Friday night tomorrow night. So I think I get home about ten something Saturday morning. I'm looking forward to it. I miss the family. I haven't talked to them all week. No phone signal, no internet. So I have no idea what's going on outside this boat in the world. So I mean, it's just uh, see my family. So, all right, last day we're on the church and this is all we're going to get done. So when we, when we got here it was just concrete foundation and um, we put up the steel, the roof and the brick walls but we're just going to stop halfway. So I've never done brick work or concrete work in my life so this was learning experience. But I'm happy with how much we got done so pretty killer be able to look on google maps whenever they update the area and see the church we built pretty cool <laughs> If you hold it above the water, will it jump up and hit it? Hey. Oh, he tried to get it. My lands. It's like fly fishing. Yeah, just yeah, there you go. Oh, oh, oh. That's the thing we've been eating. That is insane. Give you a dollar if you stick your foot in there. I need more than a dollar. <laughs> give me a dollar, I'll stick your hand in there. Yeah, right? <laughs> that hit is crazy. That hits hard, yeah. It's terrifying. Right, Jaws. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh man, my socks are getting wet. Oh yeah. That's pretty killer. That's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. I got three and we were here earlier. And it did it. I said it. Yeah. Uh Jamie, my guess? Uh Jamie. Come on guys, jump in. Hey, 
Alright guys, yeah. Trina did it earlier. Yeah. So Trina did it. I just sat there and held the floor and Trina did all the work. So there's your challenge. So come on guys. Bring my wet. There you go. It's on the surface, bud. <laughs> there you go, right there. Don't let it go down. Okay. <laughs> that thing hits hard. That's insane. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> The dolphins are out telling the old dolphins, dude, right there, right there. check this out. All these gringos over here. Did one just come right out? Yeah. A quick little report. We are officially done working on the church. Just got back on the boat and uh, collecting my laundry and getting stuff packed up. And I am freaking bushed. Um, me and a couple guys ended up finishing all the brick work and. Um, tired. I ain't gonna lie. Bummer is I lost my favorite Rogue Fitness t-shirt. Blew off the boat. So they hang the laundry up and then when a storm comes in if you don't catch it quick enough it'll blow clothes off. So lost a pair of underwear. Lost my Rogue shirt. I lost my two Builders International t-shirts. anyway yeah tonight we're gonna have church service and dedicate the church and then I think at midnight we are ripping out of here and heading back to my house so it's been awesome storms rolling in later uh, today's Thursday November 8th 5 13 p.m. local time where Cabela's yeah. headquarters was. They had really nice facilities up there. So it's been, we're in a three-year transit integration, it's right, called. Right. So you just don't do it and flip a switch course, overnight. You got all kinds of different workflow processes to figure out what's best, different software technologies. Yeah. Thousands, well, yeah. So, I mean, we have 25,000, they had 25,000. <laughs> so you're trying to meld all that together. Is that behind it? Yeah, yeah behind it's like, I, I think I got it. I'm recording right now. Selfie recording. 
as we talk. Yeah, I don't think I want to get it a little bit in the boat. Oh, they put a picture of the field. Oh, dude. That was killer. I'm, I got it because I'm recording. <laughs> Going to the first church service. <clears throat> that's Chuck, Chuck's Heine in my face. Going to the first church service in the church that we helped to build. It's a rainy, wow. lightning -y night. And we're trekking across the river. Go. All right. Dark and muddy. And these frogs are really loud. They are frogs. What's that? That's a thing about my rain jacket and my headlamp thinking ahead defaulting to my training as United States soldier that was gay and uh unfortunately the rain jacket is insulated and it's not cold because we're about 100 kilometers from the equator all right, you can't really see anything, so I'm narr narrating. I'll take some video in a second. Starting on day one, there was 10 of us leaving from Springfield, and um, the flight was late to leave Springfield by like 25, 30 minutes to get into Dallas because Dallas was so backed up. And um, it's 4:45 in the morning right now, so I'm just up and ready to go. But uh, late to leave Springfield. When we got to Dallas, seven of the guys checked their bags at the gate their carry-on bag because it was a puddle jumper and so they were only three of us made it on to the flight from Dallas to Miami the other seven missed the flight and they got on the Skylink and went the wrong way and whatever so they had to get a flight from Dallas to Tampa to Miami so their flight to Tampa they couldn't land um, they had to just orbit um, orbit around the airport until they had space to land so then they landed and then they couldn't pull it to the gate because the gate that they were supposed to pull into the aircraft broke down so they ended up having to pull it to another gate and then they had to run 
from the gate to the next fight. And when one of the guys, Bert, I don't know, I think Bert's 60 something, he fell, busted his elbow. Bad. And uh, then how they finally made it on the flight. And then our flight from Miami to Manaus, Brazil, was leaving. And the guys that were coming in, the seven, we were waiting for them to land. We were, the pilots literally held the flight from Miami to Brazil for these seven guys. Because they knew what they were, we were on a mission trip. And uh, the group coordinator, Betsy, was talking to the airline, American Airlines, and whatever. They held it as long as they possibly could, and they couldn't hold it anymore. Um, and then about that time, when they said they were going to shut the gate, the seven guys shut up. And they ran the whole way from the Tampa flight, got off, ran on the bird. So we all made it on the flight, all 22 of us. So we get down there. Um, everything seems to be going well. We got out here to the river day one. So we got here on Sunday night. It's an evening. Day one, work day was Monday. Um, we had to weld the structures together and then lay the, attach the tin to the metal trusses. Um, one of the guys burned his eyes welding. Um, he's fine now but it roasted them pretty good. I ended up welding, but now all I had was sunglasses. So I just had to get my spark, start my beat, and then look away. And then just close my eyes and look away and just kind of weld, feeling it out. Um, another one of the guys, Evan, uh, one of the sheets of tin for the roofing fell somehow, cut his leg. Um, but before all that happened, Chuck, myself, and uh, Greg jumped in the river to rinse off because Greg and I were welding and, up, and it was 100 plus degrees and up on those steel trusses. So we got back from lunch, we jumped in the river with Chuck. Chuck was dehydrated. Um, he was not doing good. Then Evan dropped the sheet of tin. He cut his leg, but got about an eight millimeter deep gash. So they brought him back over. Luckily I brought my betadine. We scrubbed it. Yeah, put butterfly stitches on it. But regardless, he had to go to the hospital. Granted, we're out here in a remote area. So the pastor, the translator Leon, Evan and Chuck got on the boat with Betsy to go to the hospital. Chuck was vomiting. He really dehydrated. So they, I think it's like a 30 minute boat ride and an hour car ride or something like that to the nearest hospital. Um, that all went on. While that was going on, Greg and I got sick. We think from jumping in the river diarrhea really bad. I started taking my Cipro and that lasted about 24 hours. Uh, so we were down um, and that was Monday and Tuesday and then people started dropping like flies, like heat exhaustion. So we're 10 or 15 of us went over to shore to work like six of us would end up going or not even us six of them would end up going because all day Wednesday I was down no Tuesday I was down Greg and I were both down and uh, up all night going to the bathroom is horrible um, let's see John all day yesterday he was vomiting I think he's dehydrated hopefully he feels better this morning Last night, Joe slipped and fell on the deck. He hit his head hard. I mean, like, dangerously hard. Um, he's fine, though. We we think so. Hopefully he didn't get a concussion because he went to sleep last night, so I don't know. We'll find out this morning. Um, 
Oh, and then the team leader, David, last night it was storming and they had to get under shelter, so they got underneath this boat on shore and he hit his head really hard and cut it open um, and there's just been a lot of injuries illness and injuries like every single day uh, it's been pretty intense so I know I'm forgetting something it seems like somebody else got sick or hurt but that's it off the top of my head. So today's the last day. Praying God, his favor's on us. And he goes before us and protects us. All right. So you know me, I'm not a super smart person. It's probably not the smartest thing I've ever done. Oh well, the natives do it so I can do it, right? Grab the boat. <laughs> I went to shore. And now, I want to walk up to this peninsula and fish it. And the whole week we've been here, I've seen this peninsula. And I'm like, man, I want to get out to that point. Well, here we go. They did see a big old black came in yesterday. One of the guys actually, his lure, caught it. It was the boat captain. Our understand the story correctly looking at footprint looking for footprints and belly slides but yeah I caught it and it pulled them to shore because it ran to shore and they got out and he took his shirt off I gotta remember that take the shirt off and throw it over the eyes oh good morning big boat it's a nice boat. Yeah, and it, anyways, he missed with the shirt and um, and they came and ran after one of the guys and then turned. So there's footprints from somebody. This is pretty awesome though. By myself, moment alone on the Amazon. It's beautiful. It's a really nice boat. Anyway, I'm going to come out here and flip the rod a couple times on the point. Fishing on this point. On the Amazon River, the sun's coming up. This is incredible. Amazing. And old boy just flew his drone over and I don't know where it went. <laughs> wow. Beautiful. That was pretty killer. Watch the sun come up, standing out on that point. Last day on the Amazon. This has been such an amazing adventure. I've never done anything like this. Did a little fishing. And uh, didn't catch a thing, but fish-wise, but I caught some great memories and experience. standing out there and watching God's creation. I'm thankful that I have eyes to see, ears to hear, and be able to enjoy his creation for us. No words, awesome experience. And uh, I'll definitely never forget this. Later. These boys, these birds are so noisy. They're noisy, yeah. but it's cool. Run 